Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of the Greenland's Farmer Contractor Series. In today's episode there, there are stones everywhere on the fields and something new has arrived all wrapped up for us. Let's go. Well ladies and gentlemen, we are back in the fields and it's finally time to get some more drilling done. Welcome back to another episode of the Greenland's Farmer Contractor Series. I am SFTN and you join me in... Granted, a slightly large overkill tractor for the job here. We're in the 936 vent as we crack through clearing this field. As you can see, the quantity of stones left in here after plowing over there were extreme. So we've leased a little uh, a stone picker and we are crushing this field. We've got, I don't know, maybe two or three more passes left in some places. Uh, and then she is done and we can move on. Uh, next job up, we've actually got the drill ready to go. The field over the way there has already been drilled. You can actually see the ridge marker tram lines in place uh which is great uh and then yeah we're all good so we will be getting this one put into spring barley uh and then we we've got one more to do with as it stands right now of our own ground and uh, that is on the other side of the field that one needs to be worked over maybe rolled over or with the culty press just to break everything down a little bit more uh and then we can oh we're gonna need to lower that then we can uh, we can work that one in so Today, though, we'll get this one done. It's nice and dry. It's fairly mild for the time of year as well, which is great. So if we can get this all in, I'll be a happy man, and then we can move on. So that's the plan. Now, with the nice warm weather that we've been having this spring, the winter drilled crops over to my right there are looking really good. Uh, they're really starting to shoot on there. No signs of any weeds in there at the moment, uh, and they are looking good. Uh, you'll notice something which is rather exciting, actually, when we get ourselves back down to the yard. We'll, uh, we're just going to do this little patch let here disengage the gps don't need that anymore uh and then we can hold her up there you go uh now we'll just spin her around we're out that gate there and we're away uh but yeah we'll just loop it around here not quite sure when we're going to spread that line or what that's going to indeed look like but we've left a little patch of stubble ground there anyway just so we can keep it under control and out of the way um and then Let's just turn here. We might end up flattening a little bit more of the spring barley there. We... Oh, I don't know if we did that. Anyway, we're good. And we're away. Uh, all of our machines, uh, bar this one and the 724 on the drill, are out at work. Which is why we're using this for... Uh, for this quite a light, easy job like stone picking, really. You could get away with a tractor about a third size of this one. Uh, but yeah, everything else is out. Fertilizer season has come back with a bang. So we've got both of the solid fertilizer spreaders out. And we've also got the, the sprayer out there as well, which is fantastic. Lots of contracts starting to come back in. The phone isn't stopping ringing at the moment, which is great. Uh, and it means that, yeah, we can pay for that combine. We can just keep going, really. Keep the business ticking along, which is exactly where we want to be. Uh, so we are pretty busy for the next week or two, at least. And then, like I say, there's going to be a bit more drilling work coming in as we get into the spring work. And a bit more groundwork on top of that as well. So always lots happening, which is great news. Uh, right now, we're going to just drop off this uh, stone picker. Because this is going to have to go back. We only hired this in for the day. Uh, but whilst the going is good, we're just going to leave this be. Uh, oh, we'll stick it into the shed. Speaking of sticking things into the shed there, we do have a new bale wrapper. Uh, we have bought it. We needed one for this year. We had to hire one in for last year. So we've hired, uh, bought one now. Uh, we don't have it here yet. It's waiting for us down at the depot to pick up there at some stage. But obviously, we're not in mo the most desperate of rushes at the moment. So it's going to stay where it is for now. And uh, it is a coon, much like the one that we hired in green for some reason. But... Uh, it's there waiting for us anyway, which is good news. So we will hopefully look to get that in the next week or two whenever we have someone who's free to go and pick it up. Uh, now, this tractor is going to actually go back on to that. In a minute, because we're just going to work over that plowed ground, which was a little bit heavy. It hasn't been plowed over for a long, long time, so it's going to need a bit of a breaking up. Uh, so the quality press will do that just fine. Uh, I'm desperate 
to get into that combine and get a little bit more well have a play with it really but we're going to be waiting for some time yet uh unfortunately it's just the way it goes but you know it is been nice to kind of have a little bit of a, a play around with it anyway so that's always good uh we're gonna knock this off here uh so like i was uh showing you uh, everything's fed up and looking good in there um had a look at actually another old 3000 series Massey that I thought about adding to the collection of classics, but it's not going to happen. Uh, not in a great condition, would need an awful lot of work. Uh, but yes, yeah, so this is going to get worked over once. Uh, just to break it up, give us a bit uh, nicer seed bed to go into. Uh, we'll do that one once we get these other fields finished. And then we should be looking good. So right now, we're going to take the 724 back a little bit, unfold it which makes it nice and easy uh to to fill it up jcb has got one bag of fertilizer on and one bag of spring barley seed you'll notice that we've already <clears throat> we have about half tanks on both actually so uh that should be fine we'll get this all ready to go But it's nice to be back on the ground there actually i must say it's really pleasing just to be able to get going and uh, really crack on okay so i think we've got these on the wrong way around actually so we're gonna put the seed in first which is gonna be this one here just creep forward a little bit, lower that down a touch. There you go. May take all of it, we'll see. Not quite, that's all right. And we'll bring that back in, just a bit of safety whilst we're on the move with the telehandler. Uh, we're looking to get rid of a, bale, a trail load of uh, bales of hay. Uh, we've got quite a lot left over in the shed. Uh, we're going to be making a bit more this year so we're going to be looking to get rid of any if you do need any uh drop us a line and we'll see what we can do i've got one merchant who might be taking them but we'll have to see uh all right well just like that we're done i'm also looking to speak to someone who has a uh, a crusher that you can bring over uh bigger one than the one that we hired because we have, we've got quite a bit of field stone that we need to get sorted out uh and that will be it's a bit in the way at the moment so we'll have to see when that can happen but anyway let's go and get this field drilled up like i mentioned we are going into spring barley uh it's on the auto uh, variable rate so that means that the gps will know where we are in relation to the field uh and based off all the so the soil samples that we've taken already knows the quality of the soil for that area of the field and knows how many seeds per square meter you need to put down reason for that being is that various different soil types will require different will have a different likelihood i guess or and the percentage chance of establishing that crop depending upon the crop type so uh the more seeds you put down in a certain area there the more likely you'd have of a successful germination so that's what we're trying to counteract make sure that we're in the best place possible uh now we are never the ideal gate to come out of that should do it you'd love to see it and through we go awesome stuff this makes this little grass uh i guess track really little margin makes getting into this field so much easier uh, we could, otherwise, we have to either trample through the drilled ground on the other uh, spring field that we put in, or we have to go all the way around the road. I don't really see the value in doing that, to be honest there, so this works out just fine for me. Uh, might swap those hangers around on the gatepost, though, so it opens up the other way. Wouldn't be a bad thing to do. And obviously, when we come in with the combine... We don't need, we need to come into one of these fields because we've got a gaping hole in the hedge over there that we can uh, come into quite nicely. All right. Now, we are in. So what we're going to do is 
I will typically drill the headlands first with this drill and not with accommodation drill. Just preference. That's all it is. Um, so let's get this around. No, I need to just adjust my... Just need to adjust my uh, drill calibration here. We're going to do four headlands. The reason we're going to do all four is it gives us a little bit more space over the tramline settings that we need. <clears throat> and then we're good. Uh, because we're not using GPS on the headlands there, well, we'll put a marker down. Uh, we're going to crack it on. And we're going to leave this little bit there. Oh, not quite, but there you go. That'll be fine. Didn't realize we were down already. Uh, and so we're on pass number one. No, we should be good. What I will do as well, as we're going up and down here, once we get ourselves sort of squared off with this hedge line, this is going to be my uh, direction of travel for my AB line, really. So uh, let's go that way. Turn on my GPS. And then let's just do that. Perfect. GPS is set. So when we when, when we get these headlands done, we'll jump onto that. Make sure it's all looking handy. And we should be good. Oh, missed a few stones there. Hopefully that's not going to cause too much damage. Now, like I say, you can see the, the seed rate is changing per square meter as we crack on through here. That's what you want to see. I want to make sure that it is changing up. There's a few areas where the uh, oil seed radish is stubbornly uh, stuck on in there, despite being worked over on several different occasions. That uh, will get minced in. It does wonders that as a cover crop there. It's absolutely sublime. As we get into some of the heavier ground here, we are sticking in 280 seeds per square meter. Around about 407 kilograms per hectare of nitrogen as well. This is a, a, a hybrid seeder, so it does allow you to drill both fertilizer and seed. A little bit more efficient. Uh, saves us having to uh, do a double pass there, really. And can also allow you to get the fertilizer right down by the seed from the get-go. So as those roots start to establish and break out there, they're able to... Uh, find all the nutrients they need to really kick on all right now we're gonna leave those stones there as well we're just gonna take a bit of a wider pass around this uh pile of lime we may well also just look to cut a bit of muck up here if we can at some point add that to the pile all right so that's first pass done we'll lift her up there probably just start over here now, because we're doing 24 meter working widths, our third pass here will have the tram line on. By the time we get these headlands done, it's not the biggest field in the world. There won't be too much left to do at all. And what we'll do is just stop about here for now. Let's go have a quick look at it. Filling up a bit of uh, a bit of the mulched in cover crop, but that's fine. It's not in doubt there. I don't mind that at all, really. Uh, giving it a little bit of uh, a cover in there as well. We'll have to watch out for slugs with that extra organic matter on the top there in the spring, but I'm sure we'll be okay. And that might have just been on that first border pass, actually, because the rest of it, the rest of it is doing all right. So that's good to know. Uh, but yeah, otherwise you can see everything is looking rather good indeed, showing you no signs of any uh, any issues with the drill. Uh, inside each of these, we're currently drilling it in to about two and a half inches down. Not even in some instances, so uh, should be pretty darn good. Uh, this feels like I say it's probably only going to take us a, a short while to get drilled up. Uh, and when we're done, we'll be able to crack on and. Uh, and really look to start getting some other jobs of ours done as well. Moving on into a bit more contracting work. Like I say, we've got a little bit of spring plowing left to do. And uh, we've got a little bit, well, a lot of fertilizer work to do. So that's fantastic to see that we're able to do that. Uh, and then one of the guys is on holiday at the moment, which is why the two tractors are here. So I'm driving one of them. He'll be back soon. So we'll be able to jump on, do a little bit more drilling uh, whilst I can crack on the 936. 
Uh, if we need to, we'll stick the other drill onto that. I don't foresee that at the moment, but you never know. We'll, uh, we'll just see we'll how that the phone calls keep coming in, see if there's any demand for it. Uh, but as it is right now, yeah, we should be should be all good. Um, this is going to go into molten barley, or malt, uh, this is a molten barley variety, which I should say. So all being well, if it meets the requirements uh, and the proteins are right there, when this is harvested, it's going to get sold off to go into uh, lager, uh, which would be good. If it doesn't, uh, if we're not lucky enough to hit the right grade there, it'll end up going into animal feed most likely. But uh, like I say, we'll hope for the former because that means there's a premium for us. And it's uh, it's very much worthwhile. Yeah, spring barley is always a crop that you gotta be a bit careful with sometimes because when depending upon how your uh, autumn or your winter drilling uh, program goes, if the weather's been particularly bad and you haven't been able to drill everything, then everyone will be coming to try and drill spring barley just to get the ground covered, and which means that ultimately the price at some point is gonna plummet, and that's no good for anybody. I uh, haven't seen that this year. I have a few contracts in place for my small amount so I can safeguard against that. Ooh. That's a bit of bush. All right. So now we're going to be on the tramline pass there. So we should be pretty good to kick that down. As you can see on my uh, drill display there, the two central coulters have shut off. Uh, provide an, and we do have the ridge markers going down now as well so it will provide a, a bit of a visible track for me as well but you can have it so the ridge markers don't go down you'll still figure out where those uh, as everything starts to grow through obviously you'll see what's working out uh, once we get this drilled today we're going to stick the roller onto something we'll be going into that other small grass field as well and we'll see how we get going lots of work to do though and lots of things to keep ourselves busy with uh, which is why we're probably going to leave it here and get cracking along. I hope you have enjoyed. I have been Simulation for the Nation. This has been a, a brief update from the Tenant Farmer. Until next time, if you haven't done so, do hit subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Hit that like button as well if you've enjoyed what you've seen today. And we shall see you in the next one. Catch you later.